God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. <clears throat> in the midst of a crisis and death and pain and sorrow that coronavirus is bringing, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And whether coronavirus gets you or not, death will. And then when you die, that is not it. Death is not the end. For the Bible states that there is an afterlife. And it's heaven by Jesus Christ alone. Or it's hell by anything but Jesus. It's plain and simple. You have to choose where you will go when you die. And I'm not talking about a grave, cremation, a monument. I'm talking about the eternal life. That death is more sure than taxation. Death is more sure than coronavirus. And Jesus Christ died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures that you might have eternal life. And eternal life means that when you die and when you have put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone, the Bible says that when you die, you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And when you have refused to believe on Jesus Christ, when you reject Jesus Christ, the Bible also says, died, was buried, and lifted up his eyes in hell, being in torment. From the standpoint of God and the scriptures, where you go when you die is your choice. God is not going to force you. A preacher is not going to make you. Because you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ of your own merit. And it's that plain and simple. You will die. If they come up with a cure for coronavirus, you will die. You are a sinner. And the wages of sin is death. There are a hundred, thousands, millions, and billions of other ways to die. <clears throat> and Jesus Christ came and suffered and died. That when you die, you can go to be with the Father. Now there's a much difference between religion 
and salvation. Religion is man-made approved by the devil. Jesus Christ is God and approved by God. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no other means to get to the Father. Going to church can't save you. And thank God because many of your churches are closed. Have I not been saved over six years being here at the farmer's market? What if your church doors close? Well, they're closed. I've been telling you that your church doors will be closed and they're closed. What are you going to do about your salvation if your salvation rests in church attendance? When your church doors are closed all over the world. And though your church be closed, you still can be saved out of church through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ today. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Church is not for salvation. Church is for growth. To grow in the Lord. Salvation rests only upon what Jesus Christ has done. There are good people who tend to church in hell. But church is not going to do it. And as they, they're closed, majority of churches are closed today. And you cannot be saved except by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And only by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ can you be saved. It is so plain and simple to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And salvation can be only wrought by Jesus. And by Jesus Christ alone, can you get to heaven? If you're relying on church, I guess the gates of heaven have been closed. But Koror Bias has proved that church ain't the answer. Your belief and your faith in Jesus Christ alone is most able to save your soul from the gates of hell. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It don't say get baptized for salvation. Baptism comes after salvation. Baptism is a public show of I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I have died to the flesh and world. And you bury death in immersion. And you come out of the water as a new being, in a new life, a life that I will live in Jesus Christ. Baptism was never given to you to be saved. 
It is because you are saved. Baptism. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I'm not here to preach about baptism. I'm not here to preach about church. You can keep your money. The Bible tells us to go out in the world to preach the gospel. And the gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scripture and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scripture. You cannot go to heaven without Jesus Christ. You will end up in the place called hell. Southside Collision is ready to serve you. And hell, like heaven, is forever. And once you get there, you cannot change your mind. Is your tree looking a little under the weather? T and D tree service. Once you get to heaven, you're not gonna want to change your mind. But once you get to hell, you stay in hell until you are prepared to meet thy God. And then the books are open. Every man was judged according to their work. And if your name is not found in the Lamb's Book of Life, you will be cast into the lake of fire that burneth for all eternity. Because you have chosen of your own free will Do you want to, learn to, to reject language? Jesus Christ time, then you need to the Son of God the, language learning app that you can the gift of God that you would not receive Him and you can go at your own pace. for the wages of sin is death Start your first lesson but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He learned to pitch in your backyard. Now his team's coming over to celebrate their high school championship. So you need Jesus Christ said he is the door. Step complete has a revolutionary formula that repairs bare spots. He stands knocking at the door. Waiting for you to come and invite him in. Get your lawn ready for any occasion. Head to your local retailer. You have no hope without Jesus Christ. For the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. And that he's coming again. It was an easy fast break and no one was near you. You know what's fast? Who's mobile super fast? And don't be caught without him. Because without him you won't be caught up. And without him your life will be hell forever and you don't rot in hell you live in hell in torment and that is forever because you have chosen to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be the Bible says to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. There is no salvation outside of Jesus Christ. There is no hope without the blessed hope, Jesus Christ. 
There is no hope in the Pope. Only Jesus saves. And Jesus is able to save your soul, for he is God. God gave his blood, Acts 20, 28, that you might have eternal life if you're to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And saved from what? Hell. It's plain and simple. Hell is a place that God does not want you to go. God is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. God's love is the Lord Jesus Christ that suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures that you might have eternal life. And that eternal life is in Jesus Christ forever. God saw the need and the need that he has provided for us is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is able to save your soul forever. You're not safe without Jesus Christ. You're not good enough. When the Bible says that there's none good, no, not one. For there is none righteous, no, not one. You must come to Jesus to be saved. You must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. That is the only means to be saved. You can't be saved, you cannot go to heaven any other way. There are no Republicans or Democrats in heaven. There's no Baptists, no Catholics in heaven. There is no other means of salvation. And then the one that said, Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. It is so plain and simple. Get out of religion and come to Jesus. Get out of trying to be good and come to the righteousness of God, Jesus Christ. Stop trying and believe by faith that Jesus Christ is able to save your soul. You cannot hope to get to heaven. You cannot think yourself into heaven. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Your belief and faith in that of Jesus alone and no other. It is plain and simple. Only Jesus Christ is able to save your soul. <clears throat> your faith and belief in anything but Jesus will get you a fast ticket to hell. There are plenty of good people in hell, but there are none that have been washed in the blood. You will not find Christians in hell. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death in hell was delivered up. 
them that were in them. And they would judge every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Without Jesus Christ, you will die twice. Because you have not been born again through the Spirit. You need a new birth because your first birth, you were born into sin. And in sin did my mother conceive me, the Bible says. You didn't become a sinner, you were born a sinner. When you were conceived in your mother's womb, not only did you become a male or female only, but you also became a bouncing baby sinner. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Your works will be tried one day without faith and belief in Jesus. And all your works will, start, will still find you wanting by God. Because God is not satisfied with works. He is satisfied with his son that suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. God is satisfied with his blood for sin. Acts 20, 28. By the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, only. Having a religion is a faith in the devil. Having salvation is a faith in God through Jesus Christ. Faith in Jesus Christ alone. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not con he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he has not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. And that name is Jesus. And there's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. And this is the condemnation. That light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil, evil hates the light. You know why you hate the preaching of the Bible? Because you're evil, you're wicked, and you're condemned. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, to become into the light, to get out of your wickedness, to get out of your sin, and have life through God, through Jesus Christ. You're a cockroach. When the preaching comes on, the light is on, you run. Get me out of here like a cockroach. 
that hates the light. What I'm giving you is I'm giving you the light. That you may have life through Jesus Christ, cockroach. And you hate the light, you hate the preaching, because you want to stay in your evilness. You want to stay in your darkness. Come to Jesus Christ to be saved. And only by the glory and grace of God can you be saved. John the Baptist says, He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. The wrath of God is hell. The faith and belief in Jesus is free. And it's of God. And you get the preaching of Jesus Christ free. You don't have your devil's music that you pay for. He ain't going to come here for free. But the preaching of the gospel comes free because salvation is free. And the radio is not going to stop me from preaching the word of God. I've had 10 to 12 years of street preaching. I've had all kinds of interruptions. And the more you try to interrupt me, the more I'm going to preach and the more I'm going to love to preach. Because Jesus Christ, the name of God, is worthy to be raised up and praised. And the Bible says, what you're doing is in the Bible. Proverbs chapter 1, as I turn there. I'd like to thank the farmer's market for giving me a place to preach on Saturday. Thank you. You won't thank me unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. When you stand before God in the great white throne judgment, maybe I'll be called up to condemn you. The Bible says, part of the Christian, don't you know that you're going to be judging angels one day? Wisdom cries without. And others are voice in the streets. Here we are in the streets. Magolia Avenue. And I have a certified paper here from, this, from the city of Daytona Beach that I can be here. Constitution. Thank you to the Constitution. I can preach the gospel. She cries in the chief place of concourse. What better place than a farmer's market? In the openings of the gates. In the city she utters her voice saying, How long, ye simple ones, Will you love simplicity, and the scorners delight in scorning, and the fools hate knowledge? It's so plain and simple. I have the right to the sidewalks of Daytona Beach, and the rights of the Lord Jesus Christ to be preached. I can move. And I can preach about Jesus Christ. And you've had the police here many times. And it's been found by the Constitution I can preach Jesus. Let Jesus Christ be praised. Let Jesus Christ be honored. How long, ye simple ones, will love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. Proverbs chapter 1 says you're going to scorn. So what you're trying to do to stop the gospel, the Bible already says, I'm already prepared. I've had 12 years of street preaching. I haven't seen it all, but I've seen most of it. And I love preaching Jesus Christ. I love to lift up Jesus. I am not getting paid for this. This is of my own free will by God. To go into the world and preach the gospel. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. 
and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Your salvation is the same salvation that I have. And that's in Jesus Christ. And nothing else. I grew up as a Roman Catholic. If I would have died a Roman Catholic, I would have been in hell. On April 21st, 1987, I met the Jesus Christ and not in a Catholic church. I was told by the King James Bible I was a sinner going to hell. And I did not want to go to hell. I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I became a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. My name was written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I became saved through Jesus Christ. And only by Jesus Christ. I was no longer a Catholic. I became a Christian through Jesus Christ. And the second day after I got saved, the next day, I began witnessing about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is able to save your soul. I know it's real because I've lived it. However long 1987 has been. I have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I have been cleansed without religion. By the blood of God, by the merit of Jesus Christ alone, am I saved. I didn't do anything to get saved. Jesus Christ did it all for me. He suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's what we're commanded to preach, the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ is able to save your soul. It's worthy to be preached. I'm doing the same thing that Jesus did. I did doing the same thing the apostles did. Went around preaching Jesus. Paul is on Mars, Mars Hill. He's looking at the idolatry. And right there before their God, he preaches Jesus. Anything but Jesus Christ is of God. And God says, you have no other gods but me. And when the Jehovah Witnesses say that Jesus is not God, they are liars from hell. Because Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Thomas said, my Lord, my God. And he got no rebuke by Jesus. Jesus Christ is God. And the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. You don't want to believe in Jesus. You'll meet Jesus one day. You'll meet him if you love him or if you hate him. You will meet Jesus. Meet him as your Savior, as the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Meet him as your salvation. That you have put faith and trust in him alone. Come to Jesus. Don't come to religion. Don't come to baptism. Don't do good works. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Again, the Bible, the Bible, Acts 16, 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ 
and thou shalt be saved. It is so simple to trust in Jesus. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. I love him because he first loved me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. As I said before, the wages of sin is death. If coronavirus doesn't get you, something else will. You will die. Death is coming. I can't tell you when, but I tell you, death is coming. And without Jesus Christ, you'll wake up in hell. Even a churchgoer, even a good person, they're filled in hell. But you won't find a born again Christian in hell. You'll find those like you who have rejected Jesus Christ. There is no salvation anything else or anyone else but Jesus. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. Mary can't do it. There is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Mary's not a man. Mary's a female. The mediator between me and God is a man. The man Christ Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way. There is no other way. God has set forth the standard. And that standard is in Jesus Christ. Jesus, 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 the greatest name I know. He pulled me out of hell's hole. Wash me clean of my sin. And a brand new life to begin. Resting upon the assurance of God. That Jesus saves. And only Jesus saves. Forever. Is an awful long time. Eternity is time without time. You say, preacher, what do you mean? Eternity has no minutes and no seconds, no days, no weeks, no months, no years. No decades, no centuries. Eternity just goes on. And eternity is a long time to spend in a place called hell because you chose, you've chosen to reject Jesus Christ. And yet eternity, by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, would be a wonderful, great time. That for the glory of God, you realize what you get when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ when you go to heaven? It's not just going to heaven and having a harp on a cloud. That, that's nonsense. I don't know who made that harp thing up, but that's not real. The Bible says that when, when we are saved and when we die, we will get a brand new body. Brand new. Without sin. That means your body will not suffer no more. There will be no more pain. No more anguish. No more sin. 
No more need of medication. No doctors, no dentists. It's the greatest health care plan that God can give you. Jesus Christ. Man can't match it. He says we get a brand new body. And Revelation 21 or 22, I forget which one, says that he'll wipe away our tears. No more tears. No more crying. No more sorrow. Is that enough to work to believe on Jesus? To go where there's no more pain, no more sorrow? No more anguish? No more having these bodies that grow old and grow in pain. And everything you do in heaven, everything, will be right. Nothing will be wrong in heaven. For those that have believed on Jesus Christ. And those that are truly Christians, when we get to heaven, will never say goodbye again. There are no funerals in, hell, in heaven or hell. You don't die in heaven. Now you may have had a loved one. I've had two wives go off to glory. When I get the glory to join them before Jesus Christ, we'll never say goodbye again. There'll be no more hospitals, no more viruses, no more government. No more taxes. No more money. And we'll be for the holy and righteous God that made us. And eternity with Jesus Christ is a great, wonderful time. Because there'll be no more pain and no more problems. This is all scriptural sound. Your life will be changed, the Bible says, in a moment of a twinkling of an eye. You'll become mortal. And yes, we'll be praising and honoring God in the Son for all eternity. But is He not worthy to praise if He took away your sins as the Lamb of God? that take away the sin of the world? Is he not worthy where he gives you a limited time of great and wonderful and grace? You see, there's no grace in hell. There's no mercy in hell. The Bible describes hell as torment. Torment. Tormented. And tormenting. By our Savior, Jesus Christ, by a man that is in there today. You can't have water in hell because Jesus said, I'm the water of life, and Jesus is not in hell. Hey, let me give you a little advice. You don't like Bible preaching? You won't find it in hell. But you won't hear laughter either. You won't hear a little child. You will not hear joy and happiness as you will in heaven. There is no joy in hell by rejecting Jesus. There's no patience in hell as you suffer in torment for all eternity. You can't stand it, you can't stand it, you can't stand it, and it gets worse and worse, and it never ends. You're not going to party in hell, because hell will be dark. Because Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Revelation tells us, New Jerusalem, that God and the Son, the Son, S-O-N, will be the light of the city. There's no light in hell. Jesus is not in hell. So you can't see your friends depart. You can't even see 
your hand in front of your face as it's tormented. That rich man in hell said, oh, if I could just have a drop of water to cool my tongue. Your entire body is in torment. You think you got pain now? Don't find out the pain of hell. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You can get out of hell. You don't have to go. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's so simple, a child can get saved. Jesus said that the broad way, many will go the broad way that leadeth to destruction. I've seen many here in Daytona Beach. I've seen many in Norwich, Connecticut, where I come from. I've seen many people in the street ministry go off the Broadway. That Broadway leads to hell. But Jesus also said, straight is the gate that Jesus said he's the door that leadeth to life. And the few that be that find it. Few get saved. The majority are not Christians. They're the minority. If I could spend six or more years at the farmer's market and one person got saved, it'll be worth it all. If one person meets me in heaven and says, hey, I know they hated you, I know they, they cussed you out, but I believed on the God that you preached to Jesus, I am here because of you, it'll be worth it all. It'll be worth it all when we see Jesus, according to him. Why not just try God? Say, you know what, I really don't know what that guy's preaching about. But let me try. The Bible says, taste the Lord and see. Try him out. Let's say, Lord Jesus, I, 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 don't even, you don't even have to call him Lord right now. Say, Jesus, I don't know what that idiot's talking about. But I'm sick and tired of him preaching. Jesus, if you're the real Jesus that man preaches about, yells about, screams about, aggravates me about, Show me who you are, Jesus. Are you willing to try that? You might find out that Jesus is good. You may not, but you gave it a shot. At least try that much. I gave, I, I gave Jesus a shot. And I believe, April 21st, 1987. I've been on fire ever since. Even backsliding from the Lord, I've witnessed. And God has given me a voice to preach. Listen, you think this preaching is bad? Can you imagine, bro, can you imagine my mother listening to me growing up loud? My mother had to hear my voice all the time growing up. My mom has put her faith in Jesus. Nothing, nothing better than doing than doing for Jesus. I just do it with a loud voice. Proverbs chapter 1 describes a street preacher going out with... This is wisdom. 
Are you scared to death of coronavirus? You say, preacher, you're preaching to nobody. These videos go out on YouTube, on my channel. And they get hits. And they get likes. And they're shared. So it's worth it. I don't do it for the, vid for the YouTube. I do it for protection. So when the police are called, everything's monitored, and I can tell my lawyer, hey, this is the video, it went well. Call upon Jesus and try him. That's what I ask. And then maybe one day you'll believe on Jesus Christ and his preacher will be, wow, I can't wait till he comes. There are Christians that come here and say, I, don't, I can't believe what you do. That's not the way. You're driving people away. Judge not. But I tell you, there are Christians that have not studied the Bible. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. You realize I'm doing the same thing that Jesus did. Sat down amongst the people and taught and preached the Word of God. Peter, James, John, Andrew, all the disciples, even Judas preached. If Judas can preach, read your Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus sat on a beach one day and preached to the people while he was in a boat. And the people were on the beach. It wasn't Daytona Beach, it was in Israel. You know what I could I could do what my church does. I can really aggravate you. I can do what the apostles did to the book of Acts. It wasn't for my feet being lame. I can go knocking on your doors. That happened in the book of Acts. My church does that. They go knocking on doors, bringing you Jesus. You're lucky my feet are lame. Because I'd be knocking on the doors of Daytona Beach. I did it in Norwich, Connecticut. And I can be wrong, but I believe, and I can be wrong, I think I hit every house in Norwich, Connecticut. Door to door, I think. I can be wrong. But that was my goal, and I think we made that goal. I could be your co-worker and give you a gospel track. You could be a cashier and I hand you a gospel track. Listen, this is not my only ministry. I will open the Bible, I will pass out gospel tracks. Anything for people to know about Jesus. I love Jesus, I am not ashamed. Because Jesus saved my soul and I know I'm going to heaven when I die. I don't care about coronavirus. If God wants me to go, he's going to have me go, no matter how he does it. The only thing I don't like about coronavirus is being sick. I hate being sick. I don't like throwing up. Who likes to throw up? That's the only fear I have of coronavirus, getting sick. I don't fear death. I welcome it. To be absent from the body and present with the Lord. As quick as you can do. However God decides to take me. At the moment I take my last breath, I'm with Jesus. How about you? When you take your last breath, where will you be? Are you assured? Do you know a surety? Without no fear, no doubt. Now I'll tell you about death. Something I do fear about death. I fear the way of death. I do not ever want to burn to death. I'm sorry to say I witnessed a family burn to death in a car accident. And that was horrible. That's all I'm going to say about it. I would not want to go that way. I would not want to go the Oklahoma City bombing. I would hate to be inside of a building that has, that has collapsed. Bomb or whatever. And be trapped alive in that rubble. I hate that would be a terrible way to go.
Both my wife died in extreme pain. I would not want to go like that. But they're at peace right now. They're with the Lord. And I know they're with the Lord. Sometimes I wish I was there with them. But God has given me a loud mouth. God has given me a mission. Go back to the farmer's market and tell them about me. And you wish I died. So do I. Heaven's a lot better than this earth. But my job is not done. Preaching about Jesus. Paul said it's, it, to be absent from the body. Oh, it's more needful. I mean... It's, to be present with the Lord, to die, to go. But it's more needful for me to be here to help you. I enjoy preaching about Jesus and his salvation and offer it to you. Now, I'm not a salesman because it doesn't cost it. You keep your money. I don't want your money. Get saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Find a, find a Bible. Believe in King James Church. Support that church and grow in the Lord. But church is not going to save your soul. And you're not going to find a church tomorrow that's open. Very few. You can't have your Estar festival. And don't get me going on Estar. I did a three and a half hour message yesterday about Esther. You call Easter, but I'm not here about that. I'm here about Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you there's no such thing as the Easter Bunny, but Jesus Christ. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. That's not Santa Claus. That's God. The Bible says, Proverbs 15, 4, Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, beholding the evil and the good. You know why evil's first? Because we're prone to do evil. I'm a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. I'm still a sinner. If we confess our sins, He, God, is faithful enough to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Don't think being a Christian, oh, you're perfect. I'm far from perfect. I'm saved. And I'm not going to hell by being a Christian. You can be saved. And you can be not going to hell by being a Christian. But that won't stop your suffering. That won't stop your pain. Now, God may show you a little mercy, a little grace. But salvation is not perfect. God ain't going to give you a million dollars. God ain't going to give you what you want. That's a lie. That's called the prosperity gospel. It's a lie. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the only satisfaction, the only guarantee you get in, in salvation of Jesus alone is you don't go to hell, you go to heaven. Now, if God will bless you and God will be mercy to you, amen. He's been merciful to me. He's been gracious to me. But I'm lame in my feet. Salvation did not stop the lameness. But it stopped me from going to hell. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. And this eternal life is in Jesus Christ. And only Jesus Christ. I have done nothing to save my soul but believe on Jesus. It's so simple. It's so simple to be saved. He hell 
is all darkness and wickedness. Heaven is the light of God. Remember when I read out of John chapter 3? It says here in John chapter 3, this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, and neither cometh to the light, lest their deeds should be made, lest their deeds should be reproved. Without Jesus Christ, you're a cockroach. You're nothing but a cockroach. You say, preacher, what do you mean? You get up in the middle of the night, you want to get a drink, you walk in the kitchen, you turn that light on, and the cockroaches run. Ah, light! Ah! That's what you are. You hate light. You love to roam around in the darkness and eat and drink and do whatever cockroaches do. You do the same thing. You eat and drink and mate like cockroaches. And when the preacher comes and turns the light on, ah! run! You're a cockroach. John chapter 3. And still you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Don't run from the light. Be a moth. Oh, preacher, what are you talking about now? Every night when I settle down and I'm breathing, whatever I'm doing this before I go to bed, I got this one moth. That aggravates me. All he does is he attacks my light. And I go to smack him, he, he goes off, and then he comes back to my light. He wants that light. That's a Bible-believing Christian. More light. Give me more light. It's surely different from a cockroach. Get away from the light. No light. Become a moth. Enjoy the light. Well, I'm going to think twice about trying to kill that moth. That'd be a type of world trying to kill the one that loves the light. You can be excited for the light, or you can run from the light. You can be a moth. Or you can be a cockroach. One wants the light. One hates the light. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Like I said, try them out. Come to Jesus with a little tiny faith. Little as much when God is in it. See what God can do with your little faith. Try him. Talk to Jesus. Ask him. Say, Jesus, is that idiot correct? Get that Bible that has all the dust on it. And read the Bible. 
Jesus said, you come to him, you might find life. The scriptures speak about the life that Jesus Christ has. John chapter 1 says the word is Jesus Christ. The most purchased book is the Bible, and the most unread book is the Bible. I don't know about 2020, but there was a time when every house had a Bible. But it's not read. Your hope in any time coronavirus or what have you, cancer, your hope is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that when you die, you do not go to hell. Now he may not solve your cancer. He may not. He may, he may not. He may heal your coronavirus or he may not. But he will for sure Write your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. That you might be saved. That when you do die, you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. That's for sure. It's so plain and simple. Jesus Christ came to seek that which is lost. And if you have never put your faith in Jesus Christ, you are lost. I went to church, you're lost. I was baptized, you're lost. I do good, you're lost. I give money, you're lost. I'm a Catholic, you're lost. I'm a Baptist, you're lost. I'm a PhD, you're lost. I have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're saved. What's the difference, preacher? Jesus. And you've got to be careful because the Apostle Paul said there's another Jesus running around. There are plenty of them. Matter of fact, there's an Antichrist. There are plenty of Antichrists. And the, the Antichrist is coming. But there's one Jesus. And one salvation. That Jesus said, I am the way. The truth. And the light. No man cometh unto the Father. But by me. There's a Catholic Jesus that you eat and drink his body and blood. You know what that's called? It's called cannibalism. And it's also called by God abomination. There's a Jehovah Witness Jesus. And that Jesus is not God. You have to have the God Jesus to be saved. A non-God Jesus can't save your soul. There's a hippie Jesus. He smokes and talks and does everything the hippies do. But he can't save your soul. There's an educated Jesus. A Jesus, the Big Bang, and God said everything and then left it to do whatever it wanted it to do. That's not the God that can save your soul. An evoluted Jesus can't save your soul. Now, a Jesus who is a creator of all things is able to save your soul. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. Jesus said, I came into the world to seek that which is lost. And the Bible says, marvel not if the world hates you. Know that it hated me first. I know you hate Jesus. The Bible says you do. You're not surprising me. If God would destroy your business for you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, so be it. I'd rather have you lost financially than lost in hell. That's harsh. No, hell is harsher. And a preacher that won't preach about the saving grace of God to the blood of Jesus Christ, he's worse. So simple. It's so simple. If you, you know, if you want to, why do you do what you do? I got a book here, Why I Preach on the Street. I got a track, a couple of them. I'll let you have it free. No toll free number, no money. I'll give it to you free. Just come up and ask for it. Absolutely free. I like that. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <coughs> How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? How they shall hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not obeyed the gospel. Look at that. That's Romans chapter 10. And Romans chapter 10 says that God loves the feet, though they are lame, of the preacher that preaches in Daytona Beach, the farmer's market. And God also said that the people that will be hearing the preacher that he loves are not going to believe all. Oh. So, you don't surprise me. But I said, if that, the few, if the one, the Bible says that the word of God shall not return void. I don't know what God will do with the preacher, what he has done with the preacher, or is doing with the preacher. But I know what God has commanded me to do. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scripture. And was buried and arose again the third day according to the scripture. Everything I'm doing right now today and Saturday's past, Lord willing, Saturday's to come, I have done according to the scripture. 
and believe it or not, you believing on Jesus or you rejecting Jesus, the scripture says so too. And yet, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved from what, hell? And your attitude in hell doesn't change, really. It didn't change the rich man. You'll still hate God in, in hell. You know who God is. That rich man in hell is still ordering people around. It is so simple to believe in Jesus. Only through the blood of Jesus Christ are you able to get out of hell. If you believe with thy heart and confess with your mouth, that's exactly what I'm doing. I have believed Jesus in my heart April 21st, 1987. And all I'm doing is confessing with my mouth. God is not going to bring trials and tribulations if I don't preach the gospel. I want to preach. God said, go. I was like, all right, let's go. Nothing better than better than better of Jesus Christ. Hebrews is a book of better and better. And it's about Jesus Christ. There's more love here preaching the gospel than the love out there selling alcohol. There's more love than the one that's dealing tobacco. They're selling you stuff that will kill you and disease you. I'm not selling nothing. And I've got something that has life. And that life rests in Jesus Christ. And only by Jesus Christ. And you have no hope without Jesus, for the Bible says, Jesus is the blessed hope. And I know what I'm about to say was written to Christians. But Paul says, have I become your enemy because I've spoken the truth? I'm your enemy here. Many of you. Many. Many that go the broad way. And there are few here that's going through the straight gate and say, I appreciate what he's doing. You're not going to heaven without Jesus Christ. You won't make it. You can't hope to make it. You can't think to make it. Because Jesus Christ said he is the way. The only way. The absolute way. And you cannot do it. And nobody can do it. But Jesus Christ. It's plain and simple. Jesus saves, and only Jesus saves. It's the grace, it's the gift, and it's the mercy of God, Jesus Christ. God is not willing that any should perish. That's why he sends preachers like me. And the devil sends his preachers out to 
to contradict the word of God that you might not be saved. But we are here to preach. Don't go to hell. The devil says, go to hell. Jesus says, don't go to hell. For the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. 